Hey folks, uh, this is actually part two of a two-part series thinking about how can we create habits and rituals in our lives that, that, that strip out the resistance or the kind of energy sapping resistance that stops us getting to a place of having a daily quiet time or a daily time of devotion. Last week I spoke about that, so if you didn't watch that video, I want to encourage you to go and watch that video, think about the question that I left you with, and then when you've done that, um, watch this video. And so, uh, the, the way that I've created uh, some habits and some rituals in my life is that I've tried to reduce as many of the distractions and as many of the questions or decisions that I would need to make on a daily basis. So, I always have my quiet time in the morning. I always have my quiet time in my office here at home. I always sit at my desk and I always have my computer on and I always have one screen open on my computer that has a whole set of questions that I'll come to in a bit. The reason that I'm doing that is that I don't want to spend my energy focusing on what should I do. Rather, I want to focus my energy on being attentive to God, being attentive to his word, being attentive to prayer, being attentive to the leading of the spirits. And so if I can strip out all of those distractions and all of those decisions that so often we can get caught up in, I can actually focus on a daily basis on the things that matter. The second thing I want to say is that I'm very, very content with having normal, bog standard, plain da daily devotions. And the reason for that is that I view a daily devotion, a quiet time, a little bit like investing into a pension. The way that you invest into a pension is month in, month out, you put some money aside, but actually the genius is not putting the money aside, the genius is in the cumulative effect of that investment. That the more you invest, the, the more growth you see, you see this kind of acceleration of growth over time, the accumulative effect of that investment. And so my goal is to focus on uh, daily drawing close to God through his word, through prayer, and my belief is that as I do that, I will grow in humility. I'll grow in Christ likeness. I'll grow in maturity. I'll grow in understanding God's word. I'll grow in learning what it means to pray. And it's the cumulative effect rather than the individual moment that is more important. This is kind of like the difference between focusing on dramatic one-off moments to the process. I, I, I want to be committed to the process of a life of discipleship. Now, friends, I have certain mornings when I wish I could have the whole morning because there's just a, a sense of God's presence with me, but that's not every day. And so I'm committed to the cumulative approach to daily devotions. If I commit myself to this process, over time I will see growth and maturity. And so uh, what do I do in my daily devotions? It, in the description below, there should be a link that you can click and you can see the list of questions that I ask myself. And again, the reason that I've written out these questions is I don't want to be exerting energy on working out what do I ask. I want to be focused on hearing from God and a prayerful time in God's presence. And so I've tried to strip out as much of that kind of decision making uh, as I can. So the first question I ask myself is this, three things I'm grateful for. This is the battle for joy. It's the battle against cynicism. It's the battle against becoming self-centered. And as you look and you look around at the world around, it's like your eyes are open to what God is doing in your life and, and, and the many, many mercies and blessings that God has poured into your life. And it stirs joy in your heart. So I always start there. Three things that I'm grateful for. And I write them down and I turn them into prayers. Secondly, uh, this little kind of tool that I've developed is what I call my daily dashboard. 
and I just score myself against each one of these headings, mental health, sleep, relational health, team dynamics, and spiritual disciplines, a score out of 10. Now, the score on a particular day doesn't really matter, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to track trends in my life. So if I see that there's a pattern where my sleep is starting to go down, the scores are going from sevens to six to fives to fours, it's like an early warning sign that something is not right. And I can turn that into prayer and I can turn that into conversations with dear friends that are close to me. I, I can maybe even turn it into a conversation with the doctors. Why? Because I don't want to hit the wall. I want to be spotting early warning signs and responding to that. And so this is really my daily dashboard. How am I doing is the question. Third, I always want to be opening my heart up to God through the Psalms. Why? Because the Psalms are A, the prayer book of the church through the last 2000 years. But more importantly, the Psalms have the whole gamut of human emotion contained within them. And so by daily reading the Psalms, it's like it's training me how to engage with a, a, a fractious and a unpredictable world, world with a stable God at the center. And so I, I want to read the Psalms and I want to turn the Psalms into prayer. And I want to, I want to ensure that my life is, is caught up in a Psalm-like prayer and response to God as I engage with the Psalms. So I read a Psalm, I reflect upon the Psalm, I turn the Psalm into a prayer. And again, I write my prayers down, Lord God, and then in light of dot, 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 these things that I've learned from the Psalms, I want to turn my heart towards you. Fourthly, I want to open up a particular uh, book of the Bible. So right now I'm going through John's Gospel. It might take me a couple of months to go through John's Gospel. I'm going slowly through the Gospel and I'm wanting to be attentive to it. And I ask these questions every morning. What does the passage actually say. Not what do I want it to say, not what have I heard some famous preacher say that this passage says, but what does the passage actually say? And I want to try and drill that into me because we are people that are shaped by the word. Secondly, are there any promises in this passage that I need to hold on to, timeless promises, like at the end of Matthew's uh, gospel, Jesus says, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Friends, that's a beautiful, wonderful promise to hold on to. It says this, that regardless of how I'm feeling, regardless of the circumstances of my life, I am never alone. Christ is always present with me. I wanna hold on to that. I wanna treasure that, that promise. Thirdly, are there any commands that I need to heed in my life? Christianity is not just a thought process. It's a life, a whole life issue. And so are there some commands that I need to hold on to? Let me give you a command that you may, may, might make you um, squirm a little bit. Confess your sins one to another. Are you doing that? Or are you conveniently ignoring that because it's just a little bit too close to home? Is there, are there some commands that I need to heed? Fourthly, how does this passage point to Christ? All the pages of the Bible point us back to Christ and I want to be training my heart to see Christ in all of the pages of the Bible. And so how does this particular passage lead me back to Christ and all that he has done for me? And then my final question is this, what am I going to do about it? I don't just wanna be a hearer, I wanna be a liver, a doer of God's word. Fifthly, I want to take some time in light of all that I've learned now to pray and turn my heart back to God. And my, my prayers, they will change and they'll evolve. But one thing that is very consistent is that I pray in concentric circles. The people that are closest to me, my family, the eldership team here. Next concentric circle I use are 
daily membership book. I pray for five people. Friends, I pray for you. Why? Because you matter to me. I've committed myself to you. And if you're a member here, you've committed yourself to me. And so I want to pray for you. I want to pray for God's goodness to be filling up your life. I take time to pray about the things that matter. Um, Next, I have a bit of time just for free journaling. It literally might be one sentence, an idea that pops into my mind that I want to come back to, but I want to give myself space to that. Why? Because I believe that as I open myself up to God through his word, and as I pray to him, that God will be speaking to me. And so I want to journal. I want to be capturing thoughts, ideas that I believe that God might be dropping into my heart. Now, many of these might get scrapped over the time, but I want to be attentive. I want to be in that posture where I'm leaning in and hoping and praying that God would speak to me. And then finally, I want to keep my heart open and supple. And so I always ask myself the question, three things or three questions that intrigue me. Friends, one of my observations is that often Christians are scared of asking questions that they don't have answers for. So they lock everything down. They're not willing to engage with big questions. I want to keep myself in a position where the list of things that I don't know is way more than the things that I do know, because that's a life with a heart posture of a disciple. And so I want to keep myself in that position. And one of the best ways of doing that is just training yourself to ask questions. What's piquing my interest? What's troubling me? What about the Bible, about who God is or the way that he works? Do I really just not understand? Keep asking yourself those questions. And over time, you're going to accumulate lots and lots and lots of questions that you can pursue in other ways. That's what I do every morning. I've got it on my computer. I write my answers down. I keep a record and periodically I'll go through my notes and I'll review my journals and look for themes and look for things that I feel like God's really underlining in my life. Friends, I want to encourage you to craft something similar. It doesn't have to be the same as mine, but I want to encourage you to put a little bit of a framework around your daily devotions. Why? so that you don't have to think about what you're doing. You can be as attentive to God as possible. I hope this has been helpful. Do feel free to drop me an email if you've got any questions about anything that I've said. But let's be people that create rituals, habits, so we can strip out as much of the resistance so that we can pursue the thing that we love the most, which is a life lived in devotion to Jesus.